What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Phase 6, your source for music, business, motivation, and support. It's your boy, Sir Love. It's another episode of Ask Sir Love. And I got a question coming from KC. I think we've answered one of KC's questions before, but we're going to do it again because KC's active, KC's engaged, KC is sending in questions, so KC, I'm answering them. KC, watch the video, what is a bad record deal, right? What does a bad record deal look like? He watched this video, and after watching this video, KC felt like, hey, how do I know the label is going to actually do what they say they're going to do, right? That's basically what he's asking. How to know they are actually going to, or going to work and participate in pushing as they're promising, like merch, PR, publishing, marketing, hooking me up with great people, etc. That is by far one of the best questions that most artists do not actually ask. They think it. But when you're actually talking to the A&R, will you be brave enough to ask? When you're talking to the lawyer, will you be brave enough to ask? Will you be so scared that you're going to lose the opportunity that you won't ask the questions that matter most to you? That's what happens most of the time. People don't ask the right questions. I mean, artists get uncomfortable sometimes when I ask questions on their behalf. They're looking at me like, man, don't F this up. You know how hard I work to get in this situation. Don't F it up. But sometimes, you know, every situation is not for you. See, if the label wants to work with you, they should be selling you on what they're going to do for you. They should be going out their way for you, right? If they tell you, yeah, come to my office and you're in another state, they should be flying you out. Or they should be getting on a plane coming to see you where you're at, right? Many executives have done that. Where are you? I'm, I'm on a plane right now. I'm coming to see you, right? What are they doing for you? What are they showing you right now that lets you know they're vested in you? You think about the great stories that we hear, like Biggie was out there rapping on the corner and Diddy, Diddy, you know, Diddy told Mark, you know, Mark Pitts, his manager, yo, bring him up. He realized, oh, this dude's a star, Right? Diddy was out there around this dude, you know, doing whatever it took to make it happen. He got real active, real quick. There's a dating period to contracts, right? I, I've said it in many, in many videos, date before you marry, right? That's my feeling. Date before you marry. Let's spend some time with each other before we get engaged. Now, will every label be willing to do that? Will every label be willing to spend time with you, get to know you, build with you, understand the relationship? No. But that should be important to you. It should be very important to you, right? Major companies, major giant businesses outside of the music business, the deal is not done just because the numbers line up. The deal is done because a person has to be truly vested. In order for me to let you buy my company, let's say, right? If I own AMC right now, we're struggling. Netflix could say, we want to buy AMC. We want the power to own theaters all across the country. Now, we know if you pay attention to Netflix and what they're interested in, you know that they're not interested in that. But some things could change, right? The price could get low enough when Netflix says, oh, we can, we can, buy, we can buy AMC. Why not control the whole market, right? Now, it's not that easy, right? You do have hostile takeovers where you buy all the stocks and all that type of stuff. But you know, in a private owned business like the music business, where, where all your companies are, every individual company is private owned outside of the majors, right? You can't do any type of hostile stock takeover. The conversation is going to happen with the president of AMC talking to the president of, of, of uh, the president of Netflix. They're having a conversation about, look, this was our vision. This is what we want to accomplish. This is why we want to buy your business. We see that we can turn these movie theaters into blank, 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 blank. They, Net, Netflix would have to sell Amazon, I mean, not Amazon, AMC, a failing company on why they want to buy them. Because AMC can say, no, we're just going to let it crash and burn. Or, no, we're going to sell to someone else. Right. HBO said they're interested. Amazon said they're interested. We don't. Why sell to you? And they're on a downswing. They don't even have any leverage right now. Right. The vision has to line up. The conversations have to line up. I got to feel like you're a good person. I got to feel like you have my I'm getting ready to give you my baby. I got to feel like you're going to take care of my baby and give my baby the time and attention that it needs. You're giving your kid away to a foster parent. That's what you're doing. 
And if they're not willing to spend the time and the energy to sell you and make you feel comfortable that they're going to do everything they say they're going to do, then you shouldn't be doing it. That's the truth. But that might not be a situation. That might not be a reality. You might be struggling. You might need the money. You might be hurting. You might be going through it. You might have to take it just to get out of your current life situation. You may not be in a position to turn them down. Right? That's the reality of being an artist in the music business, a starving artist. Artists don't get paid often, you know, right? Because they don't understand business often. They take L's and make wrong decisions with their money often. Artists don't create opportunities to make money. They just spend money often. All of these things normally put an artist in a position where they don't have leverage. Artists often sign deals with people before reading them or getting support often. So artists normally have very little leverage going into the conversation. So the only thing you can do is hope and pray. But if you've navigated correctly throughout your career, you watch videos like mine, you actually do the type of things that I tell you to do, then you should be able to date before you marry. All right. So and you also have to ask the questions. Right. I can't talk to you guys about anything that you don't ask about. If you don't ask, you don't get. You don't ask, you don't receive. That was my golden rule. My golden rule when I was working in the music industry, if you don't ask for money, I don't give you none. You know how many people work for free in the music business? I mean, some of it you just have to. It's a part of it. I did it. Everyone does it, right? But my golden rule was if they don't ask for money, I'm not giving them none. Because I'm not going to give you anything that you don't want yourself. And give you something you don't want. If you want, in the Bible it says asking, you have to receive it or something like that. I'm so off with that. But it's you got to ask. You got to open your mouth. The squeaky wheel gets the oil, all that type of shit, right? So if you don't talk about these things, they're not happening. That's number one. So when you say, hey, merch, what do you want them to do with your merch? If you don't talk about it, it's not happening. PR, which PR do you want? What are the capabilities and the qualifications for the PR that needs to be assigned to you? If you don't talk about it, it won't happen. Publishing, how do you want your publishing structured? How do you want your publishing worked? Will you build a relationship with the publishing company? On TV and, on, and in the movies, we see you know, artists on tour, on the road, having fun, but we don't see artists going to the publishing office, networking with the people in the cubicles that are actually making the phone calls to get their songs on Disney Channel. They're not building relationships in those buildings, and the ones that are are getting more deals done. How committed are you to getting what you want out of the situation? Are you going to ask for clearance and free range to, to visit buildings and go on site and meet certain people? Are you going to build the relationships? When it comes to marketing, do you know what you want? Do you know what regions, countries, cities, states you want to be in? Do you know why your, mar your product fits in those regions and areas? Do you have a compelling reason to make the label say, yes, I will do these things? You got to bring up the conversation. You got to sell because it's a two-way street. You got to sell what you're doing and they have to sell you on how they're going to complement what you're doing. And if you're not having that conversation, God darn, this is a great conversation. This is, this, is, this is the real shit. If you're not having that conversation, you're losing. This is the conversation with the manager. This is the conversation with the engineer. This is the conversation with the, with the radio programmer, with the DJ. This is every fucking conversation. Every conversation is let's talk about the details how you're doing it, right? And in order to even talk about the details, we got to be in a good place. The relationship got to be good, right? If I don't know you, you better not ask me a million and one questions. I feel like I'm doing you a favor. You can't ask me for shit. But if we built the relationship because we've been dating before we got married, got locked into something, oh, now we got something. Now we can talk. Now we can talk in passing because real business isn't done across the table straight up and down. Most business is done in the music industry, in random conversations at a bar, at a strip club, at a festival, at a house party, at a listening party, at a, like, that's where shit be happening. By the time you get to the table, you've already talked about everything that you want to talk about. It's just making sure the paperwork lines up to the shit we already talked about. So, KC, thank you for bringing this type of conversation out of me. I feel like I can keep going right now, but... The Ask Sir Love series is not supposed to be a 40-minute rant type series. We're going we're gonna to give you that type of energy on Student of the Game. But this was a great, great conversation piece. I hope what I just said was beneficial. Um, and I talk, about, I talk about some of this in the management book, about how to even have these conversations and how to get someone to respect you well enough to want to wanna engage with you in this way. Um, 
but it's all it's it, it's it's all strategy. It's a part of the game. You gotta you gotta learn it as you go. So to to recap your question, how do you know they're actually going to do the work? You have to build a relationship, have a great conversation to to make sure that you're on the same page and make them really work for your relationship and for your sign your signature before you sign that agreement. And oftentimes, once you've gotten detailed, you can actually put some of the details that you've discussed in the agreement and hold the label accountable. But all the other things that I mentioned have to happen first. So I hope that was helpful. I don't know everything, but I know a lot about a little and a little bit about a lot. And I'm always trying to give you guys everything that I got. If you haven't noticed already, I would like you to subscribe. I would like you to hit the uh, notifications tab. I would like you to become a part of my community. Keep learning, keep growing, sending your questions so that I can make dope videos like this to give you responses. This was a good one, man. Thank you, KC. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your questions. For the rest of y'all, stay focused. Beaming. Sir Love, man, I'm out.